All right, I want to do another installment on this DevOps with uh, Docker and Nginx. You, you can see the Git repo that I have all the code in. So I'm just going to look at this real quick. The last video I did, I covered um, these first two examples, scaling and then also kind of blue-green deployments. On this one, I want to cover, you know, how do you do Git deployments? And so that's what we're going to cover next. Before I cover the details, I want to introduce one more repository for this Git deployment, so we're obviously going to have to deploy something in Git. So I created a Flask API example, and again, I put this in my uh, GitHub repository. And this is pretty much the application that we used in example one and example two. I just put it in its own repo. The only thing that I will point out here is when you look in the app directory, there's no Docker file in here anymore. I always kind of feel, and I have a video on this, of that you know when we start to mix kind of infrastructure code, which is the Docker file, with our application code, sometimes it feels a little messy. Like, I kind of want to tweeze those apart. And that's what I've done here is I've removed the Docker file. It's not in here at all. It's just the application by itself. So when we do kind of our, our Git deployments, this is the application we're going to deploy. So I've already kind of downloaded this. I'm going to pull this up and we'll get going in PyCharm. Okay, so this is where we're going to start from. On, on the left, I got PyCharm. Um, on the right hand side you can see kind of a, a Chrome with a few tabs and then the Docker desktop app. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to use the readme file and, and we're just going to go through how everything works. So the first thing it does, it talks about the Git repo. And there are a couple of differences between uh, this kind of application that's in the GitHub and the applications that we did before here in 1 and 2. So first of all, in this GitHub repo, you know, I've introduced some tags. So I've ended up introduced version one, version two, and version three. And the only difference in code changes between those three versions is if you look at the app.python file here, there is a underscore version that's added to the dictionary that's hard coded. So in this case, it's version three because I'm showing you the version three tag. Um, but if I go to version two, you can see it changed to two. And if I go to version one, obviously it goes to one. So those are the only differences. All right, so the next step is the configuration. So in this directory, if we look at these um, previous ones, you know, you always notice that there's an app. And in the previous ones, the code for the app is actually in those directories. And so here we did a blue-green deployment and it had two directories, one for blue, one for green. So if you look at the difference between this first one and this, this third one, um, there's no code in here. The only thing that's in here is a .env example, which you should copy into your .env and apply your own API codes for these two services. Okay, so let's go ahead and do our initial deployment now. So I switched into this three underscore git deployments Flask API directory. So I'm in the directory that has the Docker compose file. Um, and we're gonna run this first command, which is Docker compose up. I do have an alias for docker compose so instead of having to type docker compose all the time i just use my alias so i'm going to run this and we're going to get this example running depending on you know whether you ran this before and whether the images are cached it may take longer but right now you can see that the three services start started you can also see that in docker desktop over here you got the three services that are started um, and now up here i can refresh my browser i got three um, different tabs open. This is slash ping. This is slash green slash ping. Let's get that. And then this is slash blue slash ping. And so all three tabs are working. And I covered kind of the details of the API last time, but what you can see is you can see the underscore version right now is one um, for both for all three of the tabs. So both the green deployment and the blue deployment are both run in version one. The other thing you can see is production, which is just the slash ping endpoint, is FF35. If you come down, that's the ID for the green container. So right now, production is running uh, the green container. So that green deployment is the one that's kind of set up for production. So now let's go ahead and, and stage and deploy a new version. So one of the first things that we're going to do is let's go ahead and clear out this screen. So we're just going to follow these five steps. So the first step is sometimes I don't know which containers in production you know we did it easily here because I'm exposing this information on the API and I can go see it normally you may not know so this is a helper that I created to be able to tell you which is 
um, the deployment that's in production. So right now it says production is the green deployment, which kind of matches what we saw earlier. Step two is I'm going to update the version in the .env file for the staging server. So production is, is the green deployment. That means staging is the blue uh, deployment. So what we're going to do is go to the .env file. And you can see right here there's two versions. One is for the green deployment, version 1. And one is for the blue deployment, which also says version 1. And that's why both these deployments right now, you can see version 1 and you can see version 1. So what we're going to do is we're going to deploy version 2 to our staging server, which is right now the blue deployment. So we're going to set version 2 for blue to v2. And we're going to go to the next step, which is, which is to run this next script. So what this script does is it rebuilds the staging environment, which is um, the blue deployment. And it's going to rebuild it with whatever information we put here. So it's going to pull down version 2. And we'll get into the details of how that works in a little bit. But for now, we're just going to run this script and let it work. And so you can see it kind of rebuilt everything. And then it's started up again. So if I go to production, which is the green deployment, this should not have changed, version 1. So green is still at version 1. But now the blue deployment should be run in version 2, which it is. Now if I need to scale this, then at this point I would run one of these commands for scaling. And I'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste this. We covered this in our first example case, but we're just going to run this here. So I'm going to scale the blue deployment up to five instances. And so it's going to create and make sure that there's five instances of that container running and you can see app blue one two three four and five are all right there so now if i refresh blue what you're going to see is not just version two but you're going to see um, the host id change in between the five instances and again that load balancing we covered that previously in a previous video that's happening because of docker docker has uh, the name service set up so that it's round robining those five different instances of app blue all right and then the final step is we're going to run let me just clear this out a little bit the final step is we're going to run that swap deploy and we covered this in our blue green deployment so what this is going to do is is this is going to reconfigure nginx so it's not pointed at app green for production it's going to point at app blue and so now if i go and refresh my production environment I'm seeing version 2 here. And again, I'm seeing it load balance between the five instances of AppBlue. Let's just run that one more time just to show how simple that is. Um, and we're going to deploy version 3. So first thing is I figure out which is production. It says blue is production now. So then I, I visit my .env file. I update the staging server, which is version 3, to whatever version I want it to run. And then I stage that version and then I can scale it up or not but then after I'm done scaling it up I can run the dot swap and then now production is pointed at the green deployment which is running version 3 and so you can see green is running version 3 here and blue is still running version 2 and it's still load balance between five instances all right and then finally down here at the very bottom um, there's a couple other things but I'm just going to shut everything down. So if I do DC down, it'll take all of those containers and shut them all off for me. Okay, so let's now that we've seen it in action, let's take a look under the hood and see what's going on. Um, we've already kind of briefly talked about this .env file, but it provides three environment variables to the Docker environment. So one is the URL to the GitHub repo that we want to deploy inside the containers. And so we're now we're just using that example one that I already showed you on GitHub. And, and the second two environment variables are the versions we want to deploy into kind of the green containers or the blue containers. So let's take a look at these scripts now. The first script is which is production. Um, this script is pretty easy to explain. And I have the containers running. And just to kind of help us walk through this, um, I'm just going to take this Docker command and we're going to run this on the command line. So this Docker compose exec exec means you want to execute something inside one of the containers uh, the container you want to execute this inside of is called nginx and i'm going to use the kind of the linux file system command ls to list out information about this file <clears throat> and so this is the result 
it says the file that I asked about is a sim link to this other file. And that's kind of the key for me to figuring out which containers run in production. So this is the production environment right here. And it's pointed to kind of the green uh, deployment, which is the, the green comp file. And so when I run this command, I'm gonna get into this variable, this string. So current then has this whole string in it. And then what, down, what I do down here is I conditionally echo out um, the production environment based upon what's in that string. So if I find the word green inside that string, which I will, I'm gonna echo out production is green. So that's why that works the way you see it here. So when I say which, and I run this, it'll say production is green. So that's the first script is which is production. All right, and then we'll take a look at the second script that we ran, which was stage underscore version. Um, this one isn't much more complex. The first thing we do is we source the .env file. So we're bringing these three variables, these environment variables, so we have access to them inside this script. And the only two that we're really using are this app underscore version underscore green and app underscore version underscore blue. So you can see them here. So those are the variables. That's how we access those variables. And, and we're just accessing those for kind of an echo statement. So we're just saying, hey, we're staging whatever this variable is, version one to blue, or we're staging version one to green. We do the same trick that we did before is we figure out which is production by using kind of this docker compose exec command. So if we think about this again, you know, here's if I run this again down below, this is what we're getting. So it says green. So then here's my logic. If I find the word green in this string, then I do the following, which is I echo out that I'm staging a certain version of blue, and then I docker compose up dash d which is again the daemon and i'm going to build rebuild app blue and then when i issue this command any of my existing containers you know if they were running and i had scaled it up to run five of them for example it's going to scale it back down it's so going to be i'm going to end up with one instance of blue but it's going to i've rebuilt it okay so that's kind of the trick here and if it turns out that blue was production, then the same thing down here. I'm just going to do that for app green. I'm going to rebuild and I'm going to re kind of deploy app green. And then the final script was swap deploy. And we covered this when we covered the blue green deployments, but it again uses the same trick. It's got this current variable that we pull this line into and conditionally based upon if I find green, that means green's in production. And then that means I'm deploying, I'm going to deploy blue. So to do this, I run a certain command inside the Nginx container. And so what this Linux command does is it, it kind of creates a symlink for this file. So this file is a symlink and it's going to be symlink to Nginx underscore blue comp. So I'm pushing to deployment the blue um, containers. And then vice versa down here, I'm going to symlink in the green containers. And then finally, I execute inside the Nginx container this nginx s reload which kind of reloads nginx and then i have this kind of zero downtime um, migration of the deployment from either blue to green or green to blue so those are the three scripts and now let's take a little bit deeper level at docker compose and how these services are, are kind of built up this isn't much different than the blue green deployment i still have an app blue service i have an app green service and i have an nginx service the only changes are here I have some arguments that I'm passing into kind of the build. So I'm passing in my GitHub repo URL and I'm passing in the app version. And so this is the syntax for grabbing a variable from the .env file, which is here. And I'm grabbing the git repo URL, which is this one. And what I'm doing is I'm taking that variable and I'm providing it as an argument called git underscore repo underscore URL, same name. And it doesn't have to be the same name. You can name it something different, um, but I'm just doing the same name and it'll become available inside my Docker file when I'm actually building the image. Same thing for app version. So inside the Docker file, which we'll examine next, you're going to see that we're using this variable called app underscore version. And depending on if I'm building the, the blue service or the green service, those can be different values. Uh, one of the things I want to, again, just kind of highlight here is 
you know, when we started off, we had our app. Inside the app, you know, was all the code, but now it's in a GitHub repo. But inside my code previously I had a Docker file. I don't have a Docker file inside my GitHub repo anymore. And, you know, I have a video on kind of separating that out and the reasons why you would do that or wouldn't do that. I think there's a lot of advantages to not having it in here. So if I look in my app, there's no Docker file here. And I think there's a lot of advantages to, to separate the infrastructure as a code, which is kind of how I build my Docker containers and all of that stuff. And I pull that out of my app code and I separate those. I think there's some advantage to that. Let's take a look at the Docker file that builds the image for our application. Okay, so we have a Flask app, so we're basing our image off of Python 3.6. Um, I'm creating this working directory here called slash repo, and here I'm getting set up to run my git clone command. So first thing you'll notice are the two arguments. So when you want to use those arguments inside the Docker file, you have to kind of declare them. So I'm declaring this as an argument, but those are mapped to these arguments that we've passed in. And then I'm running my git clone command. So my git clone, I'm using the app version argument, v1, v2, v3, and then I'm using the git repo argument right here, which is the URL to the GitHub repo. And then I'm saying clone that into my slash repo directory inside my container. All right, let's just take a look at the results of this command. So when I run this git clone, and I build this image out. So I got my containers running here, but if I go look at app blue and I want to go look at the files in app blue, I should find this slash repo directory. And I do. And if you compare side by side that repo, then um, you can see the git ignore and the readme file, which are here in the app directory. Then you can see the dot env example, the app dot pi requirements and the WSGI file. After line number nine, I have successfully uh, cloned down that particular version onto the image. Okay, if we look at line 11, it's just copying this .env file from um, a local directory into the app. If you recall, the app has a .env underscore example and it doesn't really have any API keys to it, but if you wanna set those API keys and you wanna deploy with them, then you just have to have a local file and you can map that local file and copy it into your application, which is what that line's doing. And then I'm just resetting my working directory to the application directory itself, where then I can run these commands. So I'm pip installing all the requirements, I'm exposing port 8000, and I'm starting up the service on port 8000. So the only real difference between what we're doing now with this Git deployments and what we did before was how the actual application code is getting inside of the image. So here I'm using git clone to pull the uh, app code from a GitHub repo into my image. Previously, if you recall, if I look at this Docker file, I'm using an add command. So I add all of the files into kind of the image. And then I won't cover the details kind of of the Nginx service, um, but we'll just kind of hit the wave tops here. But again, I have an Nginx container. Um, there's a build in this directory called Nginx, which you'll see right here. And there's a Docker file in there. Um, it's basing it off the Nginx image. So it's removing kind of the default comp files for Nginx. And then it copies in um, these two files, which are a comp file for the green deployment and a comp file for the blue deployment. And then finally, it creates a symlink, which is it's setting this is the symlink to this file right here. And so Nginx, when it starts up, it's going to look for um, an Nginx comp file in the Nginx directory, and it's going to serve up green by default when we initially start our app. And then you can look at these two files here. And if you just look at them, the only real difference here is that line number 30 um, on the green underscore green file, it's actually pointing to app green. And on the underscore blue file, it's pointing to app blue. That's really the only difference. We covered the rest of the details in a previous video. And those are the details of how you can use kind of Git deployments to deploy certain versions to kind of a staging server and then have zero downtime, switch it over to production. If you have questions or ideas for maybe a, a different example that I can explore, let me know in the comments below.